Welcome to the Pilot Podcast, where we review the pilot episodes of TV shows to answer your question, should I watch this? My name is Mitu, and we don't have a new episode this week, so we're running back one of your favorite reviews, which is, of course, a very messy show, Money Heist on Netflix. So check it out now. Welcome to the Pilot Podcast, where we watch the pilot episodes of TV shows and answer your question, should I watch this? My name is Me Too. And my name is BJ. And this week, we're doing a deep dive into a single episode of a TV show, the pilot of Netflix's Money Heist. So stay tuned to find out when Me Too last visited the National Mint. Stay tuned to the end to find out if that's a juicy story. Also, thank you to our listeners who recommended this show. We are making our way through the list, and this one was recommended by many of you. So let's dive right in. Money Heist is actually a Spanish heist crime drama called La Casa de Papel in Spanish, and it's all about long-prepared heists. In this first series, it's actually a two-season show with four parts, but... We're just going to break down the pilot episode. We're following a team led by The Professor, played by Alvaro Morte, as he pulls together a team of criminals so that they can rob the Royal Mint of Spain. So as you can imagine, the series is set in Madrid, and we actually follow Tokyo, a runaway robber played by Ursula Corbero, who is scouted by the professor to participate in this plan after her life was going downhill. The team also has some other interesting characters, such as Berlin, played by Pedro Alonso, who acts as second in command. We have Moscow, played by Paco Taos, Nairobi, played by Alba Flores, Rio, played by Miguel Haran, and Denver, played by by Jaime Lorente. There's some other people as well, but we're going to focus on these guys for now. So in this first episode, everyone comes together, they make their plan, and let's just say after taking 67 people hostage, things start to go a little off book. Me too. What were your first impressions? Off book is exactly right. They started to diverge from the professor's very carefully cultivated plan early on, which made it such an exciting and also anxiety inducing show. Money Heist is not for the faint of heart. I felt like I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. And I didn't know if I was rooting for the hostages or the people who took them hostage in order to rob the mint. I just wanted everyone to execute what they wanted to get done. That's very impartial of you. Just you want anyone to succeed. Even the robbers, there's a part where Denver and Moscow make it into a vault of money and they stop to celebrate and get distracted. And I felt so tense, like, just grab the money and go, just grab the money and go. And then I was like, what am I rooting for exactly? But I really wanted them to just get it together, grab the money and head out. I felt the same way. There were plenty of scenes where Berlin and I believe Nairobi were just not wearing their masks. So everyone started the heist with these dolly masks. Very creepy, by the way. And I know that Rio turned off all the security cameras, but I don't want to risk a hostage seeing me, a camera being missed, anything like that. I was stressed out. They were playing very fast and loose with masks. Mm -hmm. Maybe an allegory. (laughs) for today's society. (laughs) Wear a mask and you'll be safer. But yeah, they did not seem to be concerned about concealing their identity. So let's talk about the people on the other side of the heist. As you explained, Beach, this crew is trying to rob the Mint and they take some hostages and we meet them and get to know their characters a little bit, which puts you on the other side of just wanting the robbers out of there so the hostages can be safe. We meet Monica, who is played by Esther Acebo, and she is the secretary of Arturo Roman, played by Enrique Arce, and she is potentially pregnant with his child, Juicy Juicy. He has a wife and three kids at home. And then we also meet Allison Parker, played by Maria Pedraza, and she is the hostage that they care most about holding her for leverage. And she is the child of the British ambassador to Spain. And you see her having a very bad, no good, horrible day. 
<laughs> while people are initially being taken hostage, she is hooking up with her crush in the bathroom and he takes inappropriate photos of her without her consent and tries to post them online. On her phone. So while she is fighting him for her phone... A whole hostage situation is happening. Robbers kick down the door to the bathroom that she's in with her boyfriend. And you feel so sorry for her because she already thinks she's having the worst day ever because this horrible person is putting these photos of her on the internet without her consent. And then she's ushered into a gun filled dangerous situation it's a wild day for her and her class and everyone at the mint who works there oh yes she's on a field trip she and her class are taking a tour of the mint that quickly gets interrupted i guess if you were to take a tour of the mint that is when it is most open and available for viewing is when it is being opened up by robbers (laughs) but we see that they actually have an interesting plan of sealing things off and just having everyone patiently wait they don't intend to hurt anyone, which makes you wonder at this point, what is the professor's long-term plan? And oddly enough, he's the one who's not there. He's sitting at their little headquarters bunker somewhere, listening to them and talking to them. But they've cut off all radio and cell phone signals. So they literally had to feed a wire through the plumbing system so that they could have a direct line to talk to him. And he's still just waiting around. He can't see what's happening. So I really think the professor is the most interesting because he's taking the least amount of risk and he's also the least informed of what's going on. And it's his plan. This feels very you. Wow. In that you would want people to do something wild, Mm -hmm. not be part of it to not assume any risk, but be in charge of it so that you can understand and attempt to control the flow of information. Which character do you relate to most? I already told you which character I would be. You want to be a hostage. I want to be <laughs> I want to be a hostage because I would just pass out and make myself sleep and that's how I'd pass the time <laughs> to it being done. Okay, how about we talk about a more interesting character than the generic hostage? Than the hostage who sleeps through <laughs> the whole engagement? The generic unconscious <laughs> hostage. <laughs> How do you feel about our lead, Tokyo? She is a strong lead in that whenever she came back, I was immediately interested in what she was doing. There's a lot of intrigue around her. She's very mysterious. She's very tough. You can tell she kicks a lot of butt. She is the narrator of the show. So we have to view it through her lens, which makes her unreliable in that it's through her lens. So sometimes she doesn't have the full information or even if she does, she's intentionally framing it in a way that is beneficial to her. I think it's a testament to her and to the actor Ursula Corbero that there is so much happening and I did not lose her in the show. There are like 15 characters introduced, I would say at least four or five different storylines and I never lost sight of Tokyo. Whenever she came back, I never was like, oh yeah, this show's about her. That's true. The directors and writers do a great job of balancing the group of eight robbers, as well as this cast of the hostages. So you are able to follow along. You don't feel like you're not spending enough time on a plot line. And Tokyo still feels like the lead character, almost called our heroine. She's not, but (laughs) (laughs) she's our protagonist. There we go. Yes, protagonist. Though, to some, she could be a heroine. One of the interesting angles of the robbery was that they're not supposed to harm anyone. They're not supposed to kill anyone. And I think think there may be some plans to redistribute the wealth a little bit. I think their goal is to get on the side of the people so that hopefully folks are a little discouraged from finding them post robbery. So with that said, maybe she is a little bit of a heroine. How would you feel if the professor tried to recruit you and offered you 300 million euros? I have no skills that would be helpful to that group of robbers. Don't underestimate yourself. Thank you, BJ. I really appreciate you. Thank you for that affirmation. You're welcome. So 300 million euros, would that convince you to lead a life of crime? No. (laughs) If I were on their team, I would literally be a liability. It would literally decrease their chances at that 300 million. And then I don't know where you stash that kind of money. I guess, I don't know, wherever people who don't pay taxes stash it. Put it under your mattress. $300 million under my mattress. (laughs) In my freezer. (laughs) 
<laughs> buy a nice big house with a lot of land and bury it in the backyard. Or find someone that you can pay cash to. Oh, to clean the money like good girls on NBC. There you go. Okay. You'll figure it out. I believe in you. Okay. Well, to everyone listening, <laughs> when BJ said you'll figure it out, he's not referring to me actually robbing anything. It's a hypothetical. I'm actually practicing very conservative physical distancing. I have not left my home, let alone tried to go rob a bank. And I have no plans to. Rona or no Rona. A mint. The royal mint. Of Spain. Yes, I have no plans to fly to Madrid should Europe let me in and then proceed to rob their royal mint. You have low goals in life. What would you do if the guy came up to you and he was like, you want $300 million? At least you have some transferable skills. You're very good with data, very good with analysis. You're a scientist. I'm sure that there's like an approach that you take to problem solving that would be valuable to that team. Thank you for acknowledging my transferable skills. I think they make me very useful in the workforce in general and help with my (laughs) resume. But if I was walking down the street and a man in the car pulled up and was like, you could be a cook on a Chinese boat, I would keep walking. That's true. I would actually think it was a very strange cat calling. And you would keep walking. Yeah. So maybe I have been offered 300 million euros. <laughs> yeah, and we don't even know because we put our headphones in, pretend to listen to a song and bop our heads down yeah. the street. Yeah. I feel like people on the metro used to talk to me and I'd just be like, sorry, I'm in my own world. I definitely avoided almost all conversation on the street, unless it were like specifically an older woman asking for directions. That's it. You missed out on so much. Money. Opportunity. So back to the show that we're reviewing. What predictions do you have for this ragtag group of robbers who are somewhat successfully taking over the mint and these hostages who, in addition to navigating being a hostage, they have intra-hostage crisis? I don't want to go into any spoilers. There is a twist at the end when there's a bit of action. I think that we're going to now take a turn in direction where it might be less about the robbers taking charge and maybe we'll give the hostages an opportunity to have a counter attack or counter plan. Um, We see that right now they're all being very submissive, obeying, keeping their masks on. All of their phones have been taken away from them. When BJ says keeping their masks on, it's that the hostages have all been blindfolded. Yes, eye masks. And so I think they're going to try and find a way to communicate with the outside world. We know that there is a phone at the reception desk that they were able to use to just get people to leave them alone. Maybe someone will have to go to the bathroom and then they'll sneak into the break room and get a cell phone. I think the hostages will be the next ones to make a major move while the team of robbers committing the heist, they're just going to try and recover from stumbling for a moment. What do you think will happen? I think the next move will be on the part of the hostages, but I also see potentially a hostage gaining affection for one of the robbers. The robbers are all charming. They have all had some character development in the pilot episode of the show, which is surprising given how much stuff is going on. But you see that they're human in addition to doing this crime. And I could see the hostages, potentially some sort of Stockholm situation, developing an affection for them or beginning to develop an affection for them. And they might even turn a hostage. Do you think someone on the team might turn against them in like the opposite direction? I bet they planted a hostage. So we have another city nickname team member who the professor is working with outside of the main group. I also bet that a hostage will develop affection for them, especially the robber Berlin was very calming and sweet, as sweet as you could be (laughs) while training a gun on people, but very calming and kind. He said he wasn't a monster. He let them touch him. He is really humanizing himself to them. And what do you think the lamb, Allison Parker's role will be going forward? Or what do you think they have planned for her? I bet she's a leverage chip. If things go left and they get discovered and a bunch of people descend upon the mint, they can use her as a major leverage. So she's got our backup getaway free card. Yes. Beach, what would you rate Netflix's Money Heist? I think I'll base it off of your rating. What would you rate it? 
I would watch again seriously. Y'all, this show is juicy. If you like Elite, if you like the Ocean series or robber heist movie concepts, this is really fun and you get to watch the plan come together and unravel and come together again as is typical with heist stories. But then it has this like juicy soap opera edge to it with mistress babies and the bad boyfriends. It's fun. There's relationships among the robbers that that might go well or sour. So there's a lot of juice coming too. Perfect. I was hoping you'd say this. This is literally one of the most watched series on Netflix. But you know, I'm taking a summer class. I don't think I have time to watch it. So I'm just going to let you summarize. There are four parts. It's season one, part one and two, season two, part three and four. And I'm really looking forward to your written report on what happened. I know you're going to condense it really well for me. And it's like I would watch it again seriously, but it's through you. Here's the thing. Like you said, it's one of the most popular shows on Netflix. I assume that's why a ton of our listeners recommended it. Mm -hmm. You couldn't just find a couple articles. It's not the same. I like your voice. I like how you describe things. Okay. And you know what plot points will interest me the most. And so that's what you can share with me. Well, to our listeners, we'll happily share more reviews with you if you go to thepilotpodcast.com. You can also find us on all streaming platforms. And I think you've noticed this, but we have a new format where every other week we'll do an episode like this that has received a lot of recommendations from our listeners. And then every opposite week from these listener recommended reviews, we'll do our traditional, you know, reviewing four shows at a time that are new and awaiting our review so that you can determine whether they're worth your time to watch. And you can always follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Pilot Pod. And please email us more show suggestions or thoughts, feelings, your write-ups and reviews of Money Heist. Yes. Or really just even your experiences at your national mint for whatever country <laughs> you're in. You know, what was it like? Was there a heist during your visit to ask the pilot podcast at gmail.com? Don't send us anything incriminating, though. Yeah, no evidence. Just fictional stories. Very fictional. Thanks for listening. Bye.